All right, so what I'd like to look at here is um, taking this force and circulating around in a rectangle. So let's just say, say what that rectangle is, right? So if I've got um, some x and y axes, and I guess because of the way I've done it, this will be a long rectangle. So it's going to be um, A units wide and B units tall. It'll look like this. So this is my rectangle. And I want to figure out um, what is the work done in one cycle. So I, uh, I guess I need to choose directions. So what direction should I choose? I'll just go around this way. Whee. This is actually pretty interesting because we use this sort of idea what I'm going to talk about in um, magnetism and we use it in uh, thermodynamics all the time to figure out um, basically the energy lost in a particular cycle. So I've got just something driving around in some random um, function here that is reasonably easy to work in two different ways. And I just want to show you that these two different ways work. And I think I said some Green's theorem is what I'm going to be using. And that Green's theorem is what allows you to figure out how much energy is lost in a um, cycle. So, or how much work is done in a cycle. So I'm given that force, F, and I'm given a path. And the path has um, three parts, right? It goes um, minus a over two comma zero. Two, I guess it's four parts, really. To um, a over two over zero comma zero. To a over two comma b. To minus a over two comma b. To minus a over 2 comma 0 again, and that's its cycle. And so we work out how much uh, energy is lost per cycle in a lot of different instances. Uh, it's very important for something like a, um, uh, let's, like an engine, right? When you've got an engine that's running at, um, what, uh, 3,000 RPM, 3,500 RPM, it's losing energy for each, um, each time this thing goes through the entire thing. So uh, it's very important to figure out how much energy you're losing per cycle while you're actually um, while you're actually working things out. So we want to find the work per cycle. I'm sorry, this isn't a particular example. Um, I'm just going off the top of my head and you know it's been a long day. You know, same old thing as always, woke up at 6 and kept on going from there. And now it's the end. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't bother you with um, my late night problems. Um, so, you know, I've got this work per cycle, now I want to figure out what it is, alright? So, uh, the direct method is just to do the, um, is just to go through and, you know, do the path integral or line integral, right? And that's um, the integral around this circuit, right? Of f dot the um, circuit, right? Which is the integral around the circuit of f times the tangential vector at any particular point on in the circuit, dc, right? Um, and that's really four different, four different uh, integrals, right? So the first integral is from minus a over 2 to a over 2, right? And the force is um, the x component, right? Because it's just going in the x direction, the positive x direction. So then we have f0 prime 
times minus y and then um, minus y which is zero excuse me so that's minus zero uh, dx so that first bit is zero that's good uh, then we want to go ahead and um, add in Oh, what should I add in here? Um, I want to go from here to here, so I go from minus, or I go from zero to b, right? Of f zero prime times a times one minus y over b squared um, dy. Y is increasing. Uh, then I add in. Um, a over 2 to minus a over 2 f0 prime times um, b I guess minus b right minus b um, times minus dx I hope uh, plus b0 F0 prime A, 1 minus Y over B squared minus DY. Um, am I missing anybody here? So, I guess these minuses don't come into play. Right. Oh well. Oh, okay. I've got the two different minuses, right? I forgot one. Of, I forgot one minus, right? Because we've got one minus for the dot product for the path. And we have the, and then we have another minus for the. Um, we have another minus for the uh, differential element. Okay. Now I'm. Now I'm happy because this, if you um, reverse this, that puts a minus sign there, minus one, minus one, those cancel out. So these two cancel, right? And that's nice because obviously going up and coming down, everything's exactly symmetric. It has to fail or has to cancel. And so we only end up with one integral left, which is one, two, three of these minus signs. Um, or that's a fourth minus sign, so we get a minus there. Um, times f0 prime, and there's no a component, so we just have a. Right? There's, oh no, I've got a b there, so a times a b, minus f0 prime a b. Excellent, that's exactly what I wanted. All right, that's nice. Okay, so. Let's see if um, Green's theorem will help me out here. Okay. Um, so part A for Green's theorem, right, is we write the integrand. So that integrand is going to be um, df the y component dx or dy yeah dx minus the x component its derivative with respect to y all right and in your book they do q's and p's um y and x and y okay good 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 um i don't know why they do p's and q's um, it seems just a lot easier for me to remember X's and Y's, is. but, you know, we all have our own um, little choices that we make, all right? And Q here is the Y component which has no X um, stuff, so we know that that Y component, A1 minus 
y over b, 1 minus y over b squared. Um, that's going to be 0, and then we subtract uh, ddy, right? Um, the f bit, which is f naught prime times minus y um, here. Okay, I've got that guy there. And let's see, do I have any other nice things here? No, I just end up with um, f not prime. Okay. Uh, so B. And we write the integral. All right, in that case, it's minus a over 2, a over 2, 0, b, f0 prime times nothing, dy dx. That's equal to f not prime a b. Oh, great. And so I have failed once again. Something I have done, I have done wrong. Oh, hey, you know you can't you can't win all these things. Let's see, minus. Maybe it's here. So let's see. One, one. Oh, that's the problem. Right there. Okay, awesome. All right, so it does work. Uh, so the problem here was I had one, two, three, four minus signs, not three. So with four minus signs, I end up with f not prime a b. All right, so excellent. So you see that? That's why you like to be able to do things two ways, is you want to see which ones agree and which ones don't agree. Um, especially when you've got all of these little things like you're doing with these path integrals. Notice again, uh, well, I guess maybe not again, but you know, if you've watched some of the other videos, you've got all these, when you're doing these path integrals or these line integrals, you have so many little things that can get you, right? Uh, and I, I mean, I just went through and corrected a bunch of homework today, and you know, I can't tell you how many uh, you know little square roots of twos, how many uh, sine errors, all of those things, how many times those showed up, right? I didn't see any major errors at all. Okay, you know, everybody was doing everything just about right, but everybody made mistakes that were just like this one. Okay. And I think you really have to be careful, especially with these things where you're doing multiple integrals and things like, like that. So I, it's been in the multiple integrals and it's been in the matrices that I've seen these problems a lot. Um, it's just that, you know, you keep on doing so many different things and one little error propagates. So anyways, um, that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. And I'll talk to you about something else soon and so forth and so on yeah um yeah i again yeah don't do things don't do these things at 11 at night because uh it's never a good idea <laughs> all right bye <laughs>